Good morning. Yay. Okay. Give a little bit of an introduction for what Going Beyond the Lens is. It's an art collective founded by Bunny, Lior, and myself. We host once a month conversations where artists of all mediums can join and talk about one topic. Sometimes these topics are chosen between the founders and sometimes the topics are um, voted upon and we all decide together. This month we'll be talking on body language. And from my experience as both a budding photographer, but mostly model for the last decade, body language has shown up a lot in the work that I do. And in Hi! And in our conversations, I'll be really curious and interesting to see how body language will show up in other artistic mediums. Um, for myself, I recently went and spoke to a class of dancers. Um, they're between the ages of 8 and 16, and there were about 11 students. And dance and modeling are quite similar. And then there's obviously some ways that they're very different. And um, learning from them as much as they learned from me how body language shows up and how it can convey something without words. And we did a fun experiment where we put up six basic emotions and had the students choose an emotion, not tell anyone, and then dance, perform it out on the spot. And it was really interesting to see how they interpreted these different words. So for example, one of the words was fear. It's one of our basic human emotions. We have six of them. And in the dance performance with fear, the dancer performed by moving their body, retching it forward and then backwards and then forward and then backwards. And when they did this, that was a, a body language communication for them that they were saying, I'm afraid or I'm scared or I don't know how to make this decision and I'm, I'm recoiling. Um, and when we later asked all of the students, what did they notice in their performance that spoke on fear for them and, and could they guess what it was, they'd mentioned the back and forth movement, the repeating pattern. Um, another dancer chose the word joy and in their performance did a lot of leaps and a lot of chest opening movements. And during this process, um, opening up their chest and expanding and being open was what the students identified as joy in body language and communication. I thought that was really interesting because also when you talk to a friend or a neighbor or a family member and their body language is open, towards you, we feel invited to share and talk more to them, right? Um, hi, good morning, Benny. It's nice to see you here. Um, let's see. There was a dance performance where a student chose the word sad. Hi, good morning. And in sad, the dancer started in a bald um, position and slowly came up to end their dance performance in a fetal position. And we know the, a fetal position to convey being closed off and sad. And when I asked the students what they noticed in that dance performance and what they would identify as the emotion, they said sad. And they identified the fetal position. It's a way for our body to protect ourselves, to close in on ourselves. Yeah, it was really interesting to see how open the students were to embracing, naming, and also observing what they saw in real time. And um, it made me feel really grateful to have that experience because um, as an adult, there are so many things that I've taken in that, you know, have... Um, I've internalized, oh, it's not okay to think that, or oh, it's not okay to recognize that or name that emotion. Um, and these kids were fearless in their, I think it's this, and assertive in you know naming what they thought and what they observed. I thought, wow, you know, I'm, I'm really honored to be in this space and to learn from these children who are so open to taking a guess and and you know 
observing and naming what they see so confidently. And it might have been wrong or it might have been right, but participating or engaging in the conversation was the most important part to them. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. Good morning. Hi, Matt. It's nice to see you here. Hi, Lior. Hi, Bunny. So that's kind of something that I've been thinking about this week, and I'm really excited to dive in to our conversation to learn from other artists and other mediums what body language plays a role in theirs. I have some ideas, but I'd love to know and understand the nuances of where body language shows up in different mediums. I'm sure from working with painters, I've experienced... um, the noticing and the awareness of an emotion in the eye. Usually when painters or when I've worked with a portrait painter, they would pay attention to the corners of the eye or the twinkle in the eye that could share express joy or the tremble in the eye that might share express sadness. Um, A lot of the things that the kids noticed were eyebrow expressions and it could be because we're, we're resigned to wearing masks right now and that is a lot of what you can see on a person's face but what they noticed was in in fear your eyebrows knit together or in disgust you recoil and jump back and your eyebrows might jump up i thought that's really cool yeah kids really are and it was so cool to see all of the little nuanced things that they brought up and noticed in body language and also be able to experience and witness them expressing a particular emotion, you know, on a whim. It was impromptu, and it was really cool. And I also got to share with them, um, I, I model, and here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an impression. Can you guess what it is? And for them to immediately be able to identify, you know, sadness, and then to ask them, what do you observe, and how does it come up? And the eyebrows... They said the eyebrows come together like this. I thought that was really sweet. Um, I'm really looking forward to what other folks share, what they observe, and and how they pay attention to body language. Because there's so many different things that come to mind from personal experience, how I observe sadness in a body versus how someone else can observe sadness in a body, or how you might visually or even written observe sadness or share sadness especially because we have an artist that is an author and discusses the writing process. And that's been really interesting to observe how to create a visual image in someone's mind, you know, that aligns with the story that you're trying to share. So I'm really curious to see how that comes up. Uh, I think I run out of the things that I can share with y'all. I really appreciate y'all showing up and I hope that you show up on Saturday. Um, Fortunately, one of our founders is feeling a lot under the weather and so I really missed their participation this morning, but I'm so looking forward to them, one, feeling better and also hopefully seeing them on Saturday. So please join us. We've got uh, the link in the bio. As always, they're free and all you have to do is sign up. It sends an email with the link and hi it's totally okay Lior. we will look forward to your presence on saturday if you feel better um oh let's see the details that community people doesn't see it for artists and party work recording career and lettuce for so many visions that can feel through eyes mm. i appreciate you sharing that And I look forward to having more nuance and depth in this in our conversation on Saturday. Um, Link is in the bio. I'll share the video. You can enjoy this for the rest of the week. There will be two other lives that will give you a little bit of a taste of what we're going to share on Saturday. And then please, please do sign up. Again, it's totally free. And the beautiful part is even if you can't make it and you've signed up, We send a PDF of all the goodies and things that we learned during the session. So, see you there. 